Today I've got a drum and bass group for you using the fractal rhythm theory that I'm working on. And uh, this was suggested to me by somebody on YouTube. And so I thought, well, it might be worth a try. Now, I, I want to just say, though, that the fractal rhythm idea is not really so much about genres. It's actually more about transcending genres. And uh, also, it's not really about drum programming. It's more a way to develop your musical intelligence and your musical vocabulary, like your rhythmic vocabulary in particular. But it's interesting anyway to to give it a try and and see if we can come up with something that sounds a little bit like drum and bass, even though it's very different as well. So I thought I'd start by just playing a few of these grooves that I put together just to show you uh, how it sounds and then we can take it apart a little bit and check out more of the details. So let's just listen to a few of these. Okay, so you can hear, that, that's just a few of them. As, as you probably remember from my other video, the, this is Ableton Live, and this is my fractal rhythm generator. And I have scenes down the right side here where I've made different arrangements of patterns. When I was starting to do it, I wanted to at least capture two different qualities of drum and bass. One is the ridiculously fast tempos they do. So you can see up here in the tempo, I've got it set to 170 beats per minute. And the other thing that drum and bass has is a lot of intricacy, especially in the kick drum and between the snare drum and the kick drum. So that's what I was trying to do with this. Other than that, I'm following the rules of fractal rhythm. If you haven't checked out my first video on the fractal rhythm generator, it might be good to do it because it describes how this thing works exactly. But just as a refresher, each one of these clips has uh, a pulse in it, a periodicity. It's measured in terms of 16th notes. So if I were to just take one, like this kick drum, it happens every 10 16th notes, as you can see from the 10 there. So if I put a hi-hat with it, Okay, so following the rules of the fractal rhythm generator, we can only use periodicities. These are all regular pulses. Uh, some of them have patterns in them, but most of them are just regular pulses. They, they're not rhythms, they're just pulses. So for example, I can just randomly go around. This is every 11. This one here is every nine. This stick over here is every 15 sixteenths. So anyway, you can hear they're just single pulses in every one of these. And what happens is when you combine pulses of different lengths together, you get interference patterns which become rhythms. And so all these rhythms are generated by interference patterns between pulses. They are not uh, anything that I created. They're just uh, different interactions of pulses. So when we combine these pulses together, we get all these different rhythms. 
I'd like to talk a little about dualities because there are several different dualities we use in fractal rhythm. The most obvious one would be right and left, the right hand and the left hand. And uh, the idea is that we pass continuum between the right hand and the left hand, and every time it crosses this center line in the body, we generate electricity. So what I want to say is, when we combine pulses of different periodicities, like groups of three, groups of five, groups of seven, groups of eight, groups of four, uh, the most magical rhythms come up when we combine pulses from either side of the center line here. In other words, if we put all even numbers together, we don't get interesting rhythms. And if we put all odd numbers together, we don't get interesting rhythms either. I just want to demonstrate that a little bit so you can get the idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so in this example, I'm just going to play only pulses with even numbers. We, we have 8, 12, 4, 10, and you can hear that the rhythm is a little bit boring. It's not even really a rhythm, it's da 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 da. Of course, a lot of music sounds like that, but it's strictly left brain, 2, 4, 8, 16, it, there's a kind of a 4-4 four, four conspiracy going on. I think it's even more important than the A440, where we have all of our notation is in these denominations, you could say, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes. And uh, everything is set up that way. Groups of three and odd numbers are always kind of funneled into the even number realm. But then on the other hand, when you put only odd numbers together, you get a rhythm that's, well, it's interesting, but it's not grounded. Like this is an example. Or this. You can hear it's just sort of random. You don't know where one is, You, it's not grounded. We can ground it even a little by putting the metronome in four while we hear it. The minute you hear something in four, it tends to organize itself. So the idea is that when you combine numbers from both sides of the spectrum here, the, the odd numbers and the even numbers, you get a lot more interesting rhythms because they're not square and boring, but they're not too out there either, so that you can't orient yourself. And uh, because the even numbers on the right side are more about groundedness, about being in the world, like a, like four. Everything is four four. It's like the four legs of a table. It's very grounded. So if you combine that with with odd numbers you get rhythms that are grounded, but also that lift you up. Because you can see these odd numbers here, it's like three is two with an extra one added. Five is four with an extra one added. Seven is six with an extra one added. And nine is eight with an extra one added. So this extra one tends to lift it up, tends to bring in a sort of a transcendent element. Let's just listen to one of these grooves and maybe we can Look a little more closely at that whole idea. In this I have a combination of odd and even pulses. So it has a very interesting rhythm, but you can also feel the pulse of it. So we can start by looking at the kick drums here. Now here I have three different channels of kick drum, but they're all in the same sound. So this one is going every 10, 16th. This one is going every 16, 16 so it's hitting once per measure, and that helps ground it.
Now this one here is every 11. So they're all in the same sound, so you start to hear a rhythmic pattern emerging out of all these single pulses. Now if we go over to the snare drum here, I have these different ghost notes on the snare drum, one every six. And then one every seven. Notice that's super quiet because the idea is to create kind of a, a busy snare drum, like somebody doing variations on a snare drum. So that's six and seven together. And then we have a snare over here. More of a hard hit every 18 16th notes. Okay, so to ground it more, I've got just a high end 16th notes. And also a shaker, just delineating the pulse and keeping it in 4-4. Four, four. So when we put it all together, we get kind of an interesting vibe. Here's another one. This is a little more odd, but to me it sounds like somebody I just want to say this is not your father's drum and bass. This is kind of coming at it from a different angle because it seems like a lot of drum and bass, I kind of had the feeling they thought of the idea by taking a surf beat on a drum set and just speeding it up to a ridiculously fast speed. But this is a, more, a lot more intricate than that and, well, probably not playable, at least not in its entirety. Uh, I'm not really thinking about whether it's playable or not by a human. If we put in the metronome, we can hear more, uh, it organize a little more. You can see I've combined these with different weighting of odd and even. If I want it to be a little more trippy and out there, I put more e uh, odd numbered pulses in than even. If I want it to be more grounded, I have more even numbered pulses. And you can play around with those variations a lot. Now this one here has a couple of stick sounds, one every six sixteenths and one every fifteen. And it comes out with kind of an interesting clave sound, which when you combine with everything is kind of unusual. I'd just like to say, I'm looking for the new here. I'm looking for something that hasn't been done. And of course, there's tons of drum and bass. You can hear it all over the internet. And uh, this is trying to come from a different place uh, because I think we're stuck in a rut rhythmically. The 4-4 four -four conspiracy, everything is so geared towards 4-4 four -four and towards even numbers of measures. We need some ingenuity. We need some innovation. 
And I think fractal rhythm theory, when you start to get into it more, you can see there are many more possibilities rhythmically than what we're taking advantage of. And they're very interesting possibilities too. The whole idea is very simple, but it can get incredibly complex very quickly. And you can find all kinds of rhythm in here. You can find every rhythm that's ever been created or played. Okay, let's, let's take a look at one of these patterns in the arrangement view of live, which gives a more visual uh, representation of what's going on. I just took one of these grooves where I had uh, a 10, a 9, and an 11 on the kick drum, and just a hi-hat pattern to ground it. But uh, as you may remember from my other video, if you take 10, 9, and 11, you have to multiply all three of those together to find out how many 16th notes it takes for the pattern to repeat. So when we multiply those together, we get 990 16th notes. And that means if we divide it by 16, we'll find out the number of measures in 4-4. It's 61.875 measures to repeat the entire pattern. Now 0.875 is 7 eighths. So that means it is 1 eighth note short of coming out to 62 measures. But anyway, let's listen to this from the beginning and we can see how all three of these kick drums only hit at the very beginning and then when the cycle is finished. Okay, here we can see the visual representation of the three. The 10 is on top, the nine is in the middle, and the 11 is at the bottom. We can see that the nine and the 10, they come together fairly quickly. Right here, they come together. But for them all three to, to come together, we have to zoom out and you can see it's 60, almost 62 measures. So let's just follow along and we'll, we'll verify that by visual. Okay, so we're zoomed out now so we can watch these go by and we'll see that they don't all hit together for a long time. They're all very similar, but it's always a little bit different. And remember, too, that this whole rhythm is a palindrome. It's the same backwards as it is forwards, as all polyrhythms are. And there they come together again. You can see I put a marker at the center of this whole rhythm because this side on the right is a mirror image of this side on the left. The rhythm on the left reverses on the right. And so if you play the whole thing backwards, it will be the same rhythm. And what I find extremely interesting about this is that we could think of one side of this, say the left side, as the visual reality that we see. And the other side is the potential reality. And 
the center point is like the mirror that reflects we've got the we've got the outer world and then we've got the reflection of the outer world so i think this is where the fractal rhythm theory really ties into the way things manifest in general now what we can do here is we can take a measure or two measures or a, just a segment of any part of this rhythm and we're going to find all kind of rhythms in there that you've heard a million times in different contexts. For instance, let's just take a, let's just randomly select a measure here like this. You can hear this rhythm repeating. Or we can move this measure over here. It's like a heartbeat. There, here, and we could expand. We could expand the segment out to two measures. And the other interesting thing is, if we were to take this segment here, for example we would go over to the exact mirror image spot on the other side of the center line, and we would get that same rhythm in reverse. I think this has a lot of symbolic implications. Okay, so let's just go through the rhythms again and just listen to them and enjoy. Turn off the metronome. Okay, there you have it. That's enough for now. There's so much more I could say about all this, but uh, we can leave it at that for now. I'll be making more videos explaining more and looking at different ways to use fractal rhythm.
because like I said, the drum programming aspect is just one small aspect of it. And I'm going to be sharing ways to actually practice these rhythms so you can absorb them into your musical vocabulary and it will greatly enhance not only your rhythmic vocabulary, but also your compositional ideas, how to come up with more original ideas. So much of the originality comes from the rhythmic part of it, especially since rhythm is harmony, which is something I talked about in the last video too. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Please like, share, subscribe, and so forth. Thanks a lot. Ciao.